I think it's important for everybody to learn about how the creation of Israel and its association with uh, what was left of Palestine, etc. I think it's important for you to understand how it came into being objectively. That is a must before one can make objective, uh, have, in my opinion, have objective opinions on the issue. Now, uh, I want you to listen to the founder of this organization. Uh, I think it's called uh, Women for Women International. She has a story about a Palestinian man, father, and a Israeli father. And both of these guys saw tragedy. And their solution, I, I want you to listen to what she had to say, because I think as long as we continue the tit for tat, uh, we continue with the killings, nothing would be solved. But I want you to listen to this, because this was one of the first messages put this way in this current uh, in, in this current m massacre, this current fiasco that we're going through that I really liked hearing as far as how do we get started towards moving in the right direction. Check this out. We'll take it on the other side. And founder of Women for Women International and host of Through Her Eyes with Yahoo News, Zainab Salvi. Zainab, thank you so much for being with us this morning. When we talk about the victims of war, it is most probably it's the innocent. It's the men, the women and the children who don't have a direct battle to carry out, but they're the victims. In Gaza now, what is the biggest concern you have? I mean, it's a very heartbreaking moment right now. To be honest, I've been emotional the whole day. Yeah. Um, and I appeal for everyone to cover the issue also with compassion to the Palestinians in Gaza right now who've just been through hell, you know. Um, they have no food, no water, no emergent, no medical cares, no, not even electricity. Their doctors are appealing for electricity and fuel just to care for the, for the injured. Um, the stories of women usually what happens in war and particularly in Gaza is that they care usually how do we get food to the to the kids how do we get you know basic education going to the kids just to distract the kids right now even that is impossible in Gaza as you hear there are lines and lines to get food to get water to let alone distract the kids there are out there are reports that our kids are crying non-stop mm. non-stop because they're scared and they don't know what to do and so what we need right now is compassion in my opinion and we need the courage to be honest not to put fuel on more war and this eye to eye but we need to have the courage to create dialogue and understand what is the root cause of this issue and how do we get to solving it in my opinion it's not about Hamas it, I mean you can kill Hamas today who cares they are terrorist groups but it is about the fundamental issues of what is happening to the Palestinians and why this is happening and continues to happen for 75 years I want to bring take the opportunity to bring the stories of two men two fathers and Israel Israeli father and a Palestinian father. The Israeli father, Rami Al Hanan, who whose daughter was killed, 13 years old child was killed, and is, and he was a military man, and he also called the Palestinians animals, as a lot of Pal Israeli soldiers are now calling them animals. And he said, he said, I wanted to kill them all when my daughter got You're killed. Calling the terrorists who attacked on the. I'm talking about the Israeli animals. father who lost his, no, no, his daughter, yeah, to a terrorist yeah. or a, a suicide the, the, the bombing. And he decided, he said, instead of going and killing right now, let me take a breath, a breath, and to understand why they hate us. And he took a year to have dialogues, to just understand what's happening to the Palestinians. Came out of that saying, I understand, we are treating them like animals, let us actually heal the situation. And co-created an organization with a Palestinian father, who is an Israeli soldier, shot his nine-year-old daughter into the head for violating a curfew, nine-year-old child. Again, all the militias in Palestinian territories were like, you have to take revenge, you have to do suicide. And he again said, I will not do that because if I do that, I will perpetuate the violence and the cycle of revenge and killing. And I, he found the Israeli soldier and went to him and he said, what you did is a crime to kill a child. The day you can actually understand that, come to me. I am her father. I will forgive you. Now, that story of these Those two fathers, two, yeah. Yeah. right, created a bereaved parents organization who are advocating for dialogue and reconciliation. We need to hear them. 
They are banned yeah. in Israeli schools, these two fathers, or this effort. We need to hear them today, not hear those who are saying, let's put more missiles and more yeah. fire and more fuel right. and more of that, because we need to address the fundamental root cause of this and, you, and solve it. And you talk about who is being impacted right now in Gaza and all the children who are there. We've reported 40% or so of the population, the 2-point-plus million people who live there are children who are now trapped and are without water, without food, without electricity. We know the doctors working to help them are without medical supplies. I'm not sure if you had a chance to hear what President Biden said in his remarks in Israel today, but he mentioned the humanitarian aid and he mentioned the U.S. committing an additional $100 million in humanitarian efforts to help those Palestinian people who are also innocent victims in all of this. Do you have hope that his visit will in some way get the ball rolling to get that aid in or are you skeptical given what we've seen in the last 10 plus days i ask for president biden to have more courage to be honest to solve this issue rather than perpetuate more violence and more war and yes i do appreciate the the humanitarian uh, tunnel that he's trying to open but no i don't have hope i need more i need president biden to have more courage to stop the fighting not to perpetuate it more and to have compassion for both sides and to force the leadership on both sides to address not Hamas leaders, and most Palestinians don't like Hamas. They are a terrorist organization oppressive towards women and towards in children. Of Gaza. I mean, they're they control are. Gaza, and they, you know, before Hamas, you know, in the 60s, they were the communists, right. and in the 70s, they were the socialists, mm. and then in the 80s, they were nationalists, and now today, right. they are the Islamists, and tomorrow, they will be someone else, until the fundamentals that Palestinians, not only in Gaza, but in the West Bank, in the occupied territory, are treated not like animals and this is not this is israeli officials are saying that but treated like human beings with dignity and freedom and i think this can't be solved i don't think i could say it any better i think she's absolutely right we need to change what we're doing now and we need to understand that all all folks all these people are human beings and all of them have the same rights we have to be fair. We must be fair. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.